Okay. Live streaming. So that looks like it's all good to YouTube. Nice. Good old YouTube. Okay, sweet. Yeah, we're all good. We're live across the board. Yeah. We'll just awesome. let everybody keep filing in and we'll uh, kick it off. Beautiful. Got a nice hot coffee there? Yeah, it's, uh, it's the two o'clock itch, you know? Yeah, I, I go cold. I like, I like the iced. <laughs> West Coaster. Mm -hmm. You're a West I Coaster did. too. I know it at heart. Our, our coffee shop opened up here the other day and I forgot how good an iced coffee is. It is refreshing. That is a <laughs> fact. <laughs> All right, cool. So it looks like people are still signing on. Uh, if you're just coming in, I appreciate you guys taking the time during the day to uh, learn a little bit more about Friday Night Fight. So we'll let everybody keep filing in, um, probably kick it off here in a couple minutes. E minus 30 seconds. We got 26 folks here. Um, as the, uh, if you guys, if you join us for the last webinar too, um, you can still use that Q and A function to write questions. Uh, we're probably gonna answer some more questions uh, this time because I know it's a new concept. So at any point, if you guys have anything screwed out, um, Elena or I will uh, try and respond to you. And then, you know, if we key, if we see a few questions or one we want to hit on, we will uh, we'll address that here to the group um, as we get going. So I think we're probably good. You want to get rolling? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining again. We are uh, we're super pumped for uh, for this new uh, this new competition. Uh, you've probably seen us posting about it, tweeting about it, whatnot. Um, they're called the Friday Night Fights. Uh, we've we've had this idea for quite a while, um, and essentially what we want to do is we want to find a way to have kids get back in the cage and start competing. You know, all over the country, people are in different scenarios. I talked to some folks who are uh, some some are playing games outside, some can't go to their facility, some are able to go in smaller numbers. Um, I think this this concept fits a good middle ground where you can get people to rent some cage space with you. The kids can go in, they can compete and play in a game um, with multiple entries, as you'll see, uh, to stack up among any other player in the country or, or, or really the world on our uh, on our online leaderboard. So we'll dig into how this is going to work. What is the format of the games? What are the rules? Um, how do you register a team? Uh, what do facilities need to do through hit tracks? Um, and how do you know, how do players uh, get in touch with you guys? What's what's kind of the process? So you can see we've got this general overview flyer. Um, this is going to be a weekly competition. The first one starting out uh, next Friday, June fifth. Uh, I believe it, it's going to be pretty much running all day. So throughout the entire day, a team of one to four players can come in and they're going to play one seven inning game. Um, they'll register through the facility uh, with their online team name. They hopefully will gather their four players or they could even do you know, just one player by themselves, um, book the cage rental time and play that game. One seven inning game for reference is probably going to be uh, about 10 or 15 minutes. I think there's a 30 minute time limit overall, but it's going to be about 10 or 15 minutes. And I'll, I'll show you what, uh, what a one-sided game like that really means. So they'll be able to come in, compete. If they want to play two, three, four, five, a hundred games, uh, they can do it. And we're going to take their best score and we're going to put that on that online leaderboard and stack them up against everybody else in their division. I think we have, uh, is it five or six different divisions? Uh, set, actually seven, seven divisions. Um, for baseball, for fast pitch, and then we also have a slow pitch uh, uh, division as well, too. So everybody can compete in this. Um, we're pumped to, to kind of see the spread across the board. Um, and then, uh, obviously, there will be some good prizes. So uh, for every participant that signs up, they're going to immediately get, as you see at the very top of the screen, Easton is our first sponsor of this. So we'll have a, a, 
probably a new sponsor each week um, or, or, or some sort of variance of that. But uh, Easton, they've been a great partner of Hit Tracks uh, really from the beginning. I think they've, they've got up to five, six, maybe even seven or eight systems um, from us throughout the years. Uh, so we are, we're thrilled to work with them and, and everybody uh, that signs up and plays a game is going to immediately get a coupon to use uh, on Easton's website, a kind of an e-gift card uh, to make a purchase. And then on top of that, the winners from each division are also going to get a free bat. So if you have a team of four and you win a division, you're going to get four bats uh, for Easton included there along with uh, a cool uh, Hit Tracks shirt, I think will probably be the first piece of swag that we send out. Um, there's some fun creative stuff on there I think you guys will like. But that will roll through. It could be a hat from Hit Tracks one week. It could be uh, a hat and a shirt combo, something like that. But um, the winners of each division will get a prize. And again, just for signing up, paying the five bucks and, and playing in a game, they're going to get that cute one. So uh, let's roll through and, and uh, let me show you exactly kind of the concept. So to start out, what we have is uh, a one-sided game. I know that may be a new concept to people, so I want to start out just by showing you exactly what that means. Um, if you've used our software before, you're probably more familiar with, uh, with a head-to-head -head competition. Can you see that software already? Is that popping up? <clears throat> yep, looks good. Okay. So uh, in our gaming module, you've always been able to play a game, you know, two people versus two people straight up five or seven innings, whoever scores the most run wins. This is a little bit of a variation from that where what we can do is take one team, again, we're doing one to four players here, and have them only play their offensive halves uh, of the innings. So if we go to a new game, just locally here to show you the concept, we take uh, team hit tracks, for example. You can see some categories here on the right side. So I could do a two-sided game, which is the default most common, uh, a one-sided game or a one-sided uh, timed game. This is, this is most similar to what we're going to do. Uh, you'll do a one-sided timed game. You know, you'll be able to pick your own stadium, seven innings. Uh, there's going to be a four-pitch limit uh, per at-bat. So there will still be a count, but you know, at the end of the four pitches, the at-bat will run out. Um, there's going to be a 30-minute time limit, which I don't think any games should take longer than that. And then the, uh, the plate speed, we'll, we'll get into the rules on the plate speed for each division as well later, as well as a one 90 second timeout if they need it. So if I go into this, I hit play ball, it's, it's pretty easy here. You only see one lined up, three players. They're gonna roll through. You see the clock up there. As soon as the first pick, the first pick um, is made, that clock's gonna start ticking and, uh, and they'll play all the way through it and they'll just roll through. So essentially, when they get three outs, it's clear. At the end, if you score 10 or 15 runs, that's your run total. And that's what's going to ultimately go on our leaderboard. Yeah, just to jump in there too, Andrew, I, I don't know if there, I had some feedback while you were like on our end on the audio. So just to summarize what Andrew was saying on the one-sided game, um, just where it was cutting out a little bit, just imagine every three outs, um, the bases are going to clear, but your teams are still hitting. So that's the concept of this one-sided game is you're not waiting for, for the other half of the inning to complete. You are completing and racking up your score over the, the course of that seven innings or nine innings, whatever the format is. And that's essentially what a, a one-sided game is. So anyway, I don't want to jump in there, Andrew. I just wanted to, to make sure that everybody got that in case it, it cut out on the feedback. No, it's all good. Can you hear me all right still? Yeah. Yeah, now you're back. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay, so that's that's the concept of a one-sided game. Pretty easy. That's how this Friday Night Fights is going to work. Now, everybody, if you have a Hit Tracks um, right now or if you're getting one soon, the uh, there's going to be a big software update that's sent out on June 1st. You're seeing uh, kind of the final beta version of that right now. And if we go into the gaming module, we'll log in. On the far right side, this tab has been here for a while. Um, but it says online series. So you can go to this online series tab. You'll log in. Um, if, you, uh, if you need help with that registration process, let us know. But this part has kind of been streamlined. So this, this, these credentials are going to be your cloud uh, uh, username and password via hittracks.com. You'll be able to log in here. 
And on the left side, you're going to see all active series that players can participate in. You see, we had uh, we have uh, a mini series in March that we had. We also have a, uh, a beta Friday night fights rolling through, um, as well as these three active divisions of the Friday night fights baseball, the Friday night fights uh, slow pitch. That's that's really co-ed, and uh, the Friday night fights fast pitch division. So this is what we're going to target here. We roll through one of these. And you see we have the 12U, a pro, and a high school division. At the bottom of each of these divisions, it shows the information for that tournament. So, for example, for the, uh, for the baseball pro division, you can see in the bottom left corner, um, you just have to be 13 years or older to participate in that. Uh, it could be a single player. It could be up to four players starting on June 5th, ending, I think, at midnight on, uh, on June 6th. Um, the registration fee is $5. So... I'll show you when you register a team here, how it will notify you when you're charged for that. Uh, the game count is one. That just means it's going to take one game and that's going to be your score, but you can redo that as many times as you want. And there's the pitch format, the game length, the innings, the timeout, and then the plate speed recommendation. So the plate speed, what you'll see there is a recommended speed with a range of plus or 20 miles an hour. If, uh, if you're from, uh, a machine or somebody throwing from 54, 60 feet, try and get it around 60 miles an hour. If it needs to be harder, that's okay. Uh, cannot go above 80. Otherwise the hits won't count and it cannot go, uh, go below 40. So yeah. And just that. to jump in there too, a big reason, you know, we, we wanted this, we especially want the Friday night fight tournament to be inclusive. And a lot of our customers maybe aren't in full length cages where they're able to go live BP or scoot the machine back. Um, and 60, you know, close at 40 feet is, is pretty hot as I'm sure a lot of, you know, so, um, you know, just make sure you use a pitch speed that challenges your players. We do recommend, um, use the plate, the plate speed for, uh, that skill level. So the plate speed, for example, high school baseball is that 60 miles per hour, but if you have more narrow tunnels, um, and you have to shoot that down a little bit lower, um, definitely do that to make sure that you guys have some offense. Um, another thing I wanted to add to is on the timing of these games. And that's, what's really cool about the, the one-sided games. And I know Andrew touched on it when he was talking about the, when he was going through the series is you can play that at, them at any time. So, you know, depending on the facility and your own schedule with, within your team, um, what the Friday night fight window is going to be anytime from noon Eastern, um, to 3 AM Eastern. And so that's to allow uh, those folks out there on the West Coast to be able to compete until midnight. Um, so essentially, uh, you'll have the full day, uh, no matter what, where you fall in that window to get those games in. I like it. And just because this week we're doing a seven inning game doesn't mean that's what it's going to be for next week. Next week, we could have two five inning games and, and maybe we guide you to play at Fenway Park or Yankee Stadium or something. So there will be new challenges every week. We want to keep it fresh uh, and make a reason for the kids to want to keep coming back. Uh, okay, so you've got all the rules down there for each category, each of these divisions. Um, now, let's say you've got a team, somebody calls you uh, on Monday or Tuesday and reserves some age time. Uh, how do we go about that? So really, you don't need to do anything in advance. The, the players are going to be able to show up um, and, and fill this, uh, you know, create this team on the spot. If we go through and say, I've got a team at the pro level that I want to add, I can go to manage teams at the top of the software there. And you see, actually, I have a team over there. I made the stars and stripes team, um, game baseball level professional. Are they eligible for this tournament? Yes. So it's as simple as I could edit the team there, or I can hit that plus sign. And right here, it's telling you by registering, you're accepting the team fee uh, that will not be charged until they play a game. So that's the, uh, that's the $5 fee. We press continue. That team, we just registered three players for that lineup. They are now within that tournament. And in the bottom right corner, if I hit finish, I've got my teams in here. And now in my pro division, I have the stars and stripes team. And I can select my batting order. You got Billy Joel leading off or in a three hole? 
Andrew? I don't know. I, I figured he, he might have some wheels left in him. I'm not sure. Yeah. That <laughs> test player in the three hole is going to bring it home. That's, that's who it is. There you go. <laughs> Uh, and if they don't have a profile made already, you still will be able to uh, to enter them into this. Sorry, I figured that a little bit. Um, so if we go to manage teams up here, we can even create a new team. So if we want to add a team to the uh, to the fast pitch college skill level setting, we can create a new online team. We'll just enter the team name up here. What do we want to call it? Just call it power hitters only. And then you'll be able to go uh, to your fast pitch teams and select all the players that are eligible within this. We've got Elena and J-Lo and how about Serena? Yeah, J-Lo. <laughs> hitting lessons from A-Rod. <laughs> so now you've got the power hitters only. Um, and they, uh, oh, that they're a professional. So I just need to get that to, uh, to college. There we go. So now they're eligible to be in that uh, in that fast pitch tournament. So I think if you so th this is in, this is good because I think this might be a little bit overlooked too on the um, oh you did change a level to college perfect. So there's a level of the player and then there's also the level of the team. So Andrew, if you actually go back into that what it um, is. fast pitch there you team, go. yep. So if you change it over, so you see the. The, every individual player is going to have their own skill, their own sport, um, but also it's the overall team. So you just want to make sure that everything matches up on the left and then also for, for the players uh, to make sure that those players, that team is eligible for the division. That's a great point. So college skill level players, and we selected the team as college for fast pitch. Okay, so uh, pretty intuitive. Um, you should be able to do a lot of this stuff on the spot. Um, I, I think the total registration is going to take you probably two or three minutes per team. Uh, even if you have to make a profile for the players, um, the profile registration has been streamlined uh, with this software update. So you'll be able to add as many teams as you want in there. Again, they will, play, they will pay $5, or I guess your facility will get charged $5 the first game that you play uh, with that team. And then they can re-up and, and, and play as many games as they want. Uh, they won't get charged $5 each time, or I guess you as the facility won't get charged $5 each time. Just that one-time fee. And then we're going to take their very top score. So if, they, if the power hitters only team plays one game and they score 10 runs, okay, then they can go to our leaderboard, which I'll show you. Uh, and maybe they uh, are in fifth place and they want to play again. Uh, to score, you know, 14 runs to get into first place. They can play again, and we'll use that top score. Um, so, Andrew, but, a good question here to jump into. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked, do all players within the team have to be the same level, um, or can they be this, the players be on different levels but play up to a skill level of a team? Yeah, so what we're doing with that, I think we have uh, essentially – you just have to fit under the minimum requirements um, so or, or the maximum requirements. So for, uh, for this uh, college, let's use baseball for an example. For the college pro level, um, the players just have to be 13 years or older. Okay, so we can add, uh, you, you could have a 15-year-old that plays in the, high, or in the professional division. Obviously, they're, it's going to be a little bit tougher to compete against, but they can do that. So you could have, you know, a 15-year-old and, and a 20-year-old playing in that pro division. Um, for high school, you could have a 13-year-old playing in the high school division. Now, the caveat there for 12U, obviously, if you have a player that is above 12 years old, you can't have a 15-year-old playing down. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. And I, I'd like to clarify, too, because I think this is a really good question somebody asked about the software. Um, and what it's going to look like. So what you're looking at right now is actually the software that's coming in our latest update. So all of the registration, both for your team and for your facility for the event is going to be directly on your kiosk. So I know people that have par participated in the online stuff in the past, you've had to do it online and then um, go ahead and pull it up later on on your system at the facility. Um, but now just plan to go into gaming module online series and you will find all you will have all the abilities and applications here to do it on the fly.
Um, I see some more questions filtering in. I'll uh, so l let me show you our, our leaderboard and how this will work after they play the game, so they can kind of see the fun factor. You know, like like Elena said, the, the beauty of this is you know the easy scheduling, and then their their scores are going to be stacked up among everybody you know in the world. So we can kind of show the fun side after they're done. What happens? Um, and then, you know, we'll probably after that go through some rules and then answer a lot more of these questions in, in detail. Let's um, see something pertinent. I'm going to swap the screen share here. So let's say a team comes in, they play their game. Um, after, they are, uh, after they are done, they can go to – where is – They can go to hittracks.com, which is what I'm looking for right now. It should be show all windows. There we go. Okay, there we go. So now they've played a game and on the kiosk there or on their phone or whatever it may be, they can go to hittracks.com, which I will share with you right now. And at the top of our website, there's that button there that says Game Center. So you can go to Game Center and what it's going to do is going to pull, pull up probably all live score games or featured series. So if somebody is actually playing a game right now, you should be able to see a live game cast of their stats. So if, if the team in first place wants to see if there's any other teams threatening them, they can go to view all live games at that time and see the scores of those games in real time. Um, because we have these three featured series. You see the baseball, softball, and the fast pitch division. And I can go to the baseball page here. It's going to pull up the uh, uh, general overview of the tournament. You can view all of the teams participating, see a quick overview of the specs again. Um, or on the far right side, you should be able to see the standings. I'll, I'm going to use uh, a past tournament. So we had a tournament this last summer called the Hitrack Summer Series. Um, I think we had seven or eight teams participate in that. So if we go to the 2019 Baseball Summer Series. This actually has uh, some results. And on the right side of that summer series, there are three buttons. The top button is going to show the live scores from that. You see it's grayed out because there's no live games being played right now. The button underneath that is going to take you to the, uh, the standings. So this series is completed. So you'll see the first thing we see here are the winners from each division. We've got four teams right there that took first place. If this were the Friday night fight, they'd be getting free bats from Easton and shirts from Hitrax. Um, but before that point, they'll see the updated standings here in real time. This, this is a little bit of a different format. This game, uh, this tournament showed multiple games throughout a month. So obviously this will just show one game um, here and it will, uh, it will stack everybody up. And there's a drop down tab here that has all of your different divisions. And if you notice... Uh, to the right of that standings button is that little line chart. Players can actually go on also and see an individual stat leaderboard, which is pretty interactive. This is where stuff kind of gets intense. And so, you know, what we can also do with this is maybe down the road, you know, have somewhere, you know, we have an MVP from each division that wins something. Maybe the top home run hitter gets, uh, gets a prize or something like that. There's a lot of different things that you can do here to make this, uh, to make this creative and then fun. Good on that. Any questions on the website or the leaderboard? Um, a lot of questions rolling in. Um, a lot, a few questions just to clarify to everybody, there is still going to be the $2 fee uh, for per game played. So I've gotten four or five questions on if that's still going to apply. So it will be $5 per team for un unlimited games for the, that team, but still the $2 per game um, that's standard for the, for the gaming module. Um, haven't gotten anything that's on the leaderboards or um, or standings in particular, but I, I, there is an interesting question in here that says uh, for the high school division, you could potentially have be having 13 year olds competing against 18 year olds. Um, how can we make it more attractive for the 13 year olds to compete? So, Andrew, I don't, I don't know if you do you want to jump in there. It's like he's frozen. That's okay. So I'll, I'll take that one. And I, I only asked Andrew too, because he had a, he had a great point. And that's something we we've talked about as a staff is how can we keep everybody engaged? And we don't want any, certainly anybody to be discouraged through this. 
Um, I think Andrew, so Andrew's brought up in the past, some of the, the different ranking kind of games that he's played and whether, you know, you're at the top of that leaderboard or midway through, if you're a thousandth out of 5,000 people, you know, it's still cool to see where you stack up um, in, in within that division. So, I mean, we, you know, we hope to keep people really engaged and um, excited about playing. So Andrew, do you have anything to add there yeah. as well? Yeah, I mean, and on, t- on top of that, this what you, what you have to remember here is this is the first week of this tournament. Our plan is to do this every single Friday night. Um, we didn't want to go too big and have to shrink down from there. So we wanted to start with these key divisions. So I, I do understand that. You know, right now, if you have a 13-year-old playing in the high school division, um, that's going to be tough to compete with. But uh, I think, you know, that point stands where it's still going to be a lot of fun to see where they stack up. I think there will be a lot of kids in their range that will compete there. Um, and in subsequent weeks, I think we'll have more divisions for kids to participate in as you guys get the hang of signing players up as players uh, trust and understand the game and have a lot of fun and, and the word spreads about it. And as we kind of learn, you know, what works and what doesn't. So, yes, I agree with you. Um, I think for this one, we kind of decided just to keep it a little bit more basic to uh, to try and make sure we had a grasp of everything and, and kind of consolidate in core groups. Yeah, I think that's a great answer for sure. And, and, you know, we're really excited about this first one on June 5th because I, to Andrew's point, you know, we'll learn a lot about who signs up and how these leaderboards stack up. And, um, you know, we are going to issue different challenges moving forward. Every Friday night isn't necessarily going to be most runs scored. You know, it's a, might be highest um, quality hit points or played a certain field. So we'll have different challenges. And within that, we can also create, as, as Andrew said, different skill levels that, that better fit people that are competing. Well, that's a great point. And you brought up the quality hit points. Um, hopefully most people are, are familiar with the quality hit game. The quality, if you're not, the quality hit game has a, a point value for every single hit. So uh, with that, we're going to have a tiebreaker for this because ultimately in seven innings, it's likely that some teams will have the same amount of runs scored. Um, what the quality hit game point does is there's, a, there's an equation for every single hit based on the exit velocity, the launch angle, the projected distance, and the uh, and the uh, result of the hit, to a lesser degree, the result of the hit. Um, and we'll give you a point value. It could be 50 points. It could be 75. It could be 120, scaled to the player's skill level. So uh, what the tiebreaker will be is the total quality hit game points for a team. So if two teams score 20 runs, um, we're going to go to that first tiebreaker, which is who had the highest point value with the quality hit game points. I like that uh, concept too, because it also kind of, it keeps people uh, away from just hitting, you know, maybe a, a ground ball up the middle, but there's some incentive there to swing hard and hit the ball hard in the gap and, and do some damage with the ball so they don't just fall into a, a, a rhythmic swing. Awesome. Agreed. Questions are rolling in here. I want to add to, because I've had a, a couple on um, just documentation for, for everybody to share with um, your own community. And so we actually have created something, um, Andrew, I don't know if you want to pull it up. I can pull it up as well. Um, but we'll follow up uh, with this webinar that's recorded. We're also going to make some, some more clear documentation, just outlining the rules and protocol. Um, we'll probably make a landing page on our website, but stay tuned to social media. Um, and then also we have a, a, just a quick one pager. It's a PDF. It's pretty simple, but at the bottom, you'll be able to customize your particular, um, whether it's your cage rental fees or the time slots of that you're going to be opening up for this kind of stuff. Um, and that you can share with your community as well. So, um, you know, a big part of this for us and, you know, I'll speak for Andrew as well. Like we, we want to make sure that everybody is, is feeling really comfortable with how to, um, how to promote this with how to execute this on, on Friday nights and stuff like that. So, you know, anything that we can do to be of assistance, you, you know, give us the feedback in terms of what you liked this coming Friday, you know, if you want different divisions or different protocols, you know, we're, we're definitely willing to be flexible moving forward. So I'll, uh, I have that PDF brochure. I'll try and pull it up here. Um, one other, uh, one other note on that. Did you did you talk about Smashball? Uh, no, not yet. So 
uh, one other cool thing with this that could be a challenge in, in coming weeks as I, I pull up this PDF is uh, uh, a game called Smash Ball, which is uh, it's kind of a combination of that of the points and the runs game. Um, that takes uh, I, I think you get 12 total at bats or six hits and you can score as many runs as you can and you'll also get a point value for that. So there's going to be a lot of different things that we can do to that um, based on you know how many runs you score, how many points you score, a combination of the two. You could even represent a facility. So, you know, we could have the a facility in New York with 20 players that roll through and they are a, your, each player that plays is able to accumulate points towards their facility. So not only do you have an individual head to head competition with the runs being scored, but you also have different facilities competing against each other. And we can even put up a facility leaderboard. So uh, that is also in the docket to be released very, very soon. Um, I'm going to try swapping to this screen share so you can see the PDF format. Uh, boom. Share. I mean, are you seeing that? Uh, let's see. Yep. Awesome. <clears throat> okay. So generic outline here, but you'll be able to, uh, to use this format. And, and we have some space here at the bottom for you to be able to put in your facility logo and, and any other information that you want to put there in terms of renting pages. So I believe we'll be distributing um, this kind of outline pretty soon here. I've, I've also seen some customers put together their own flyers, which are, are pretty good. Um, that's where kind of our next push is. Um, I'm assuming most of the folks on here are, are facility owners or administrators. Uh, our next big push is to get the, kid, uh, the kids excited, which I think they are already, but we'll be doing... Um, some cross promotional stuff with Easton next week. Uh, and we want to uh, really hit social media hard. And I would definitely recommend that on your end too. The more we put that stuff out there, which is where the kids are, um, the more participation we're going to get, the more foot traffic you'll get through. So, and that's, that's the goal. We want kids playing. We want them competing. We want you guys to be able to get foot traffic and get business in the door, you know, to, to kind of hit the ground running as we, uh, as we creep back to, uh, to a normal state. Um, hey, Andrew, no, uh, no max run rule per inning, correct? Just keep playing. No. Yeah. Yeah. The, I think the only max on the runs would be like the time limit. If you, if you don't finish seven innings by 30 minutes. Pick up the pitch speed a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You, uh, so I, let's talk about that real quick. Cause we've got, um, these outlines. So, uh, if you see the pitch speed along the bottom, it's, as Elena said, that's the plate speed, the hit tracks registered plate speed. Um, we have a recommended speed on there for each division and then a range. So uh, I think Elena, you already mentioned, we wanna be able to include as many setups and as many scenarios as possible. Um, so we definitely recommend for the pro level uh, and for the high school level for baseball, a 60 mile an hour pitch speed. If you have to throw from a shorter distance, if you only have a 50 foot tunnel or a 40 foot tunnel, um, you can go down to 40, but if you're able to get that, you know, 50, 60 foot pitch distance, uh, we want that pitch speed up to about 60 miles an hour. For 12U, it's going to drop down to a, a, a target range of 50. And if you have to go down to, uh, I believe, 30, you'll be able to do that. For the slow pitch skill level, uh, we really just, we need a pitch coming in. A lot of times those folks will, will soft toss um, to themselves, they'll underhand to themselves. Um, so as long as there's a recorded pitch coming in, uh, that will suffice for this tournament. So that should be pretty easy. And that's, I think if you missed our, our uh, webinar last, uh, well, the last week or two weeks ago, it was just on monetizing in general. There's a, a great target um, of, of slow pitch players. So, you know, if you go to our YouTube and check that out, the discussion with JG and some of the guys there about that was, uh, was phenomenal. I think there's, there's a lot of folks that would be uh, down to participate in this. Andrew, will you, sorry, go ahead, continue. No, go ahead. Will you go ahead and talk about also um, after you're done with the pitch speeds on the bats? So a couple of questions yep. on the BB cores, reverse composite and stuff like that. Yep, yep. I did uh, consulting with our partners on that. So I think we got a good set. Um, for the plate speed for, for fast pitch, you can see there, I think it's 40 miles an hour for youth is the target plus or minus 20. And then uh, high school is 45 and the college level is a 50 miles an hour target. From 
you get what, what's that from Elena? 40 feet for youth, 43 yeah. for nine to 12 is going to be 40 feet, and then high school and college is at that 43 foot distance. Okay. So that's pitch speed. Yes, for bats, we don't have a way to police this, but we, we really are going to go by the honor system and hope that, that you guys will abide by this too. So for, um, I have this on the Word document, for the baseball pro division, uh, we really want players using a wood bat. Um, these are phenomenal hitters. Uh, phenomenal hitters. We really want them using a wood bat with real baseballs. Um, for the high school baseball division, uh, BB core bats, no old school beezers, um, drop threes for high school, minus three, don't do any minus eight or minus tens. Um, real baseballs, again, if you, if you need to use those rubber dimple balls, if you have one of the, the uh, pitching machines that supports those, that's okay. Those are pretty similar uh, exit velocities. And then for the youth level, uh, we really wanna use the USA bats. I know they have the U-Triple-S-A bats that are, uh, that are you know, much hotter used in specific tournaments, the travel ball bats. Um, but please try and keep, uh, keep the youth players using the USA bats, which is a, a bit more similar to the BB4. And then for softball, Elena, I believe they just need to be ASA certified, right? Exactly, yep. Yeah, that would be great. If I, that would be ideal, if possible, to have that ASA certification on the bats. Um, that's what we're looking for. Is there any ball recommendations there? Are there different types? Um, yeah, I mean, in, in every different pitching machine is different. You know, same thing um, as, you know, the, those rubber balls on, on the baseball side. Um, if possible to use real balls, that's, that's always going to be best. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of the plastic balls, those typically come off, plastic hard balls typically come off a little bit hotter um, than, you know, standard soft balls. Um, the machine balls, the, the heavy dimple ones come off a little bit more dead, but, um, you know, do the best you can to use, use real balls. And uh, if, you, if you don't have that, that option, um, you know, just work with what you got. Awesome. So what are we, we're at about 35 minutes here. Are there any other pertinent questions? Anything? Um, yeah, let's, um, Let's just confirm too, uh, once you pay your $5 for the entrance fee for the team, you have unlimited games from that. So one, one time $5 entrance fee per team, um, you can submit as a facility, you can submit as many teams to the tournament as you'd like. So it's, you're not limited to just submitting one team. You could submit every hour on the hour if you want, every half hour on the half hour. Um, and it's five dollars per team, and again, each team with the unlimited amount of games that they can try to compete and rack up their score. If you're on the unlimited license for the gaming module, it is not the two dollars per game fee. So the two dollar per game fee will only um, come into play if you're on that subscription service. If you've already paid for the unlimited license, um, you you will not be charged the two dollars per game. So just want to clarify on that. Um, I know we touched on it earlier in the conversation. But, um, you know, just bear with us in terms of the, the age levels and, and the skill divisions, what we we're working with here. And um, I think there's some concern in separating the high school from the JV to the varsity and just making sure that um, this stays competitive and everybody is, is engaged. And, um, you know, I think you can trust us when we say we want that too, for sure. You know, so we'll use the feedback from this first one. Um, and if we have to add different age divisions or, you know, break it up into even uh, smaller buckets of, of age, we, you know, we can look at that moving forward. Um, and also just a couple of things I'm seeing here too on the charge. Uh, yeah, if, if, you, if you have your card on file for the $2 per game option, um, that same credit card will be used for the $5 per team. So, you know, factor that into to the cage rental prices um, or, or, you know, whatever you wanna do, if you wanna just build that into this for now. Um, but that will just go on the same, same account there. If, if you, for some reason, if you try and go to the gaming module on your software right now and you can't get in, we probably need to help you bake a, a cloud account. Um, I believe the software update on Monday will streamline that. So it should be, uh, it should be doable then. Um, but if you have questions on that in the meantime, you know, hit us up, hit up your rep or, or write us a, a, a note to the website. Um, 
someone asked if just one person can make up a team. Definitely. Um, so it's anywhere from one to four. And, you know, Andrew mentioned it at, at the beginning of the call, but really this, this format is twofold. In the last couple of months, what we've really tried to do is create something where we can engage athletes and get them competing again and um, just really get bring back the game day feel, um, but also create a, an opportunity for facilities to bring um, some traffic back into their spaces um, and give people a reason to come back in while keeping the number of people together at one time at a minimum. So that's why we do have those that one to four restriction on the team is to hopefully help you um, keep the, the people at the facility at one time down to a minimum. Um, so anywhere from one to four, two players, three players, one single person is totally fine. And the $5 is per team, and that is for, for each Friday night. That number is not set. It's uh, a little bit arbitrary right now. We wanted to make it very affordable, but that will be per team. Again, there's no limit on the number of teams. Um, I see another question here. Can players play on multiple teams? Yes, they can. So if they play one with their buddies and maybe they want to play one right after, uh, you know, they, they can go in and play a single game by themselves as a new team. They just have to register a new team. So you can play on multiple teams. Uh, if you have a team of four players, do all four have to play at the same time? Yes. So the way that the gameplay will work, you do need all players on each team present at that time. And they'll need to complete the game then. Um, and then once they do, they're, they're good. But they do all need to be present there at using the same hit track system. So kind of a fun question here, Andrew. A way to do a mixed all-star team from all divisions at the end of the season. That's kind of a fun idea. I'll tell you what, like, you know, with, we talked a little bit on the last webinar about the online private matchup. Um, there's a lot of stuff we can do with this. Like if, if we do maybe, maybe not this week, you know, but maybe, maybe another, you know, four or five weeks from now, we take the top two teams and, and you do an online sync play that we can live stream. You know, we're working on some live streaming capabilities. So absolutely. When we're actually beta testing some live streaming for this season. So, um, you know, there, there hopefully will be an, uh, an opportunity there to, to allow some video of players uh, in real time to be accessible. And, I mean, this is fun. You can get really creative with how you do it. Um, hey, Andrew, and I actually don't know the answer to this question. Um, on, a, on a particular team, if you, when you're in managing teams, can you have six players on a team and then just change the roster weekly depending on who's coming in or do you have to take the players manually take the players in and out of that particular team uh, on the new software do you know well i believe uh i believe you can edit the team so if i make uh let's just make a team we'll call it whatever uh team a uh let's put this as a baseball team pro Oh, okay. I'm in the wrong division. I'll tell you what, I've already got a team made for this pro level. So uh, we have the stars and stripes team, which is on here. Um, they'll play this game and let's say we remove them from that tournament, uh, which will already be done when the tournament is over and expired. Your teams will save over here on the far right side. So you'll still see a list of the teams unless you actually edit the team and delete it. So you can go in and edit and add or remove players. Now, it's a good question if we add uh, Andrew and Billy Joel to this team. And we save it. Now, let's try and, uh, oh, I guess it's the wrong one. Let me add two, uh, let me add two professional players to this team. So I know if you add players that are not eligible for a tournament, they'll automatically be removed from the team's lineup. But let's add this Stars and Stripes team. Continue. And it's only registered four players for this tournament. Uh, there was six players on that roster, I believe, and it only registered four. So that's a good question. I don't know which four would register or how that would work. Um, I, I do think you should be able to set your lineup for this. 
Yeah, I think the recommendation there would be then just week to week, um, add the players that are participating and manage that team um, versus making a, an active roster in that week. Um, so I would, I think what we, what would seems like would make more sense is to just adjust the team week to week based on who's coming in. Yep. Edit the players out or remove them. Mm -hmm. That way your, your list of teams doesn't get overloaded either. Um, interesting question here too, Andrew, um, 12 you players, what is a cutoff birthday to be eligible? Uh, well, I, I believe literally once their their age changes in the hit track software from 12 to 13 is cut off. So if they're 12 years old and 363 days, then they're still going to be a 12 year old player. Um, awesome. Still rolling through each team plays one game per Friday. So to, to clarify, um, every team can play uh, as many games as they want on, on Friday night. Um, but their, our best score, their best score is what's going to be fed live to the ranking system. So, you know, if in, they book out a half hour um, and they play three games in that half hour, that we're only going to be taking the best score. But it's still only that $5 charge for that one team. Um, so just to, to clarify, there's some more questions on that. Um, another big thing that we haven't talked about yet, Andrew, is animations. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to say, just on your last point, too, the competition starts and ends each Friday. So whoever, whoever wins on Friday, June 5th, wins on Friday, June 5th, and it's a whole brand new tournament the next Friday. Brand new challenge, new rules, new divisions, whatever it is. Um, yeah. Uh, so I don't, did I, did I, are they on here right now? I think they are. If you want to see this, are. people have been waiting for this for quite a while. Um, we're going to go through the software a little bit more in depth. next week. We'll probably do another webinar just to show you guys the new functions. There's a lot more stuff. Um, but if we do, uh, if we just did a new game real quick, I'll show you. Some of these. Um, let's say team blue is going to play a one-sided game. You hit play ball. The players look a little bit higher graphic there. They're, they're three-dimensional. When the ball's hit, you're going to see them run around. They're going to dive, make plays, turn double plays. Um, they'll, uh, you know, they'll they'll try and rob a home run. I don't know if they actually do that or not. But yeah, that's uh, that will be coming on June 1st. So everybody will have that um, at least for uh, for the remainder of the year. Um, that may get built into something, but uh, on Monday, check your system, download that update. We'll have that in there. Think that, does that cover? Are we still rolling with questions? Yeah, a couple more in here. Um, can we hop in and out week to week? So yes, um, to your point right before Andrew, every um, Friday night is a new tournament. So, um, and, and just remember Easton is our first sponsor for this. And, and as Andrew mentioned on the beginning of the call, they're really stepping up and offering some awesome prizes. Everybody that participates is gonna get a, a coupon from Easton. Um, and in addition to that, the winners of each division are gonna receive bats. Um, so everybody on the team is going to receive a free bat from Easton, which is awesome. So that will be for June 5th. The following week, we'll be announcing a new sponsor with different prizes. Um, so it's not a recurring tournament every Friday night. It's just its own standalone tournament. And then the next week will be a new format, maybe a different challenge, different prizes. Um, but it'll definitely uh, be adjusted week to week. I like it. All right, so that, I know we promised everyone we'd stay on uh, until every question is answered. So um, I think we've, we've really covered everything uh, in terms of the Friday night fights. I know Andrew mentioned uh, we'll be doing another webinar uh, uh, more in depth on this software release. So next Tuesday, um, I think around the same time, Andrew, correct me if I'm wrong, 2 p.m. Eastern? I think, I think this format works, yeah. Well, I think I, think I like it. We can get yeah, we'll we can be get doing something, now. yeah, really similar, but we're really going to go through everything in the new software, the animations. Um, we'll probably do something really similar just in terms of how to how to manipulate the, the online gaming managing teams. Um, there's a lot of really cool new stuff coming out with this new version of software. Um, so we'll be doing that on Tuesday. Um, I think we have covered 
a lot, right? So Andrew, I think we should stay on a little bit in case anybody has any more questions. Um, but I think, uh, I think if you're signed on for this whole time, you, you probably got most of it. Yeah. One to four players, prizes, get the players in there, compete. It's going to be a lot of fun. If I can find an open hit tracks in Washington, I'm going to find one and play. I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know if that'll happen. We'll see how yeah, it shakes maybe out. Maybe we should year. do that. What's your dream team, Andrew? My dream team? Yeah, if you could make your it's all decade me. team. Uh, it's, I mean, if, if I'm picking my players to play with right now, that's easy. It's me, Albert Pujols, Robinson Cano, and Ken Griffey Jr. That's it. That's my, that's my team of four I'm going with. What about yours? Pretty good. Well, it's Katie Bowen. She was my second baseman in college. She was just a walking double. It's Chitty, Team USA. She's a monster. So Katie leads off. I think I follow her. Chitty cleans us up. Valerie Odo in the four hole. Absolute monster. Who's that last one? Cal Grad. Valerie Odo. Yeah. So she okay. played for Cal when I was growing up in San Mateo, and she was just an absolute monster. Um, I think she should be on everybody's dream team. Is she going to be happy about not getting the four hole there? She's a team player. You know, okay. she, she does All what right. she's got to do. But, uh, yeah, I think Katie Bowen, definitely. She's on every team I make whenever. Um, and then after that, Val and Chitty, for sure. Uh, okay, we got a couple, a couple last questions. Will each player's stats be compiled throughout the summer or just for each individual night? Uh, that's a great question, Joel. Um, I believe it's going to reset each night for this. Uh, there may be a way to compile that in the future, but I believe that will just be uh, each week will be a new tournament. Now, there will be with this online format more tournaments down the road where you can do, uh, you know, where, where we can play a whole month of games and compile them together, similar to that March series that I showed you. Um, play X amount of games in 30 days and we'll compile all of the stats. So, uh, this is kind of the beginning of this format, and, and you'll see some different variations of that rollout as well. Donovan is asking about the Zoom for next week. Yep. What did we say on that? Monday? So, yeah, Monday with the software release, we'll be shooting out an email um, with everybody or with everything that's included in that release, and then Tuesday will be the webinar. So included in that email on Monday will be the link to the Zoom webinar on Tuesday. Beautiful. All right, cool. I think we're I like good. It. I like it. One to four players. Drop some bombs for seven innings. Win a bat. Get an Easton coupon, a hit track shirt. Um, if you guys have questions in the meantime, just follow us on social media. Elena's ripping that show post for Bobby. Um, and uh Easton too. So uh, we'll have somebody going live doing an interview next week with Easton and we're doing some, some testing this weekend on this. So hopefully you'll see some good content from that too. And, and in terms of seeing somebody actually play and how the format works. So um, stay tuned. And in the meantime, follow us, shoot us an email, hit up the website if you have questions. Uh, and we look forward to, uh, to next Friday night. Okay. Awesome. Thanks everybody. That's all she wrote.